Okay, this is going to be part four of the video series on improper integrals. And in the first three videos, we looked at problems where we found the integral as you went off to the right toward a positive infinity. Now in this one, what we'll do is we'll go off to the left toward a negative infinity and see what that looks like. Now let's go back and take a quick look at the rules to see what we've had before. And they look like this. Now again, if you haven't done it, I would definitely watch the first three videos uh, so that you'll see how we got to this point. Now again, in the first three videos, it was a case one problem where you went from some fixed number a off to a positive infinity to the right and you use the top rule. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go from some fixed number b off to the left to a negative infinity. And the process will be similar, <clears throat> but the only difference is rather than taking the limit as b goes off to the right, we'll take the limit as a goes off to the left toward a negative infinity. So we'll use the second rule right here. So let's run through it and it'll be a similar process to what we did in the previous videos. Okay, first of all, let's take a quick look and just see what the problem looks like. <clears throat> so what the graph of it is. So the graph would look something like this. So if you were to actually graph this function, it'll look like this. And you can tell from the denominator that you'd have an asymptote here at x is equal to a negative 1. Now, in our problem, what we really want is this. We want to find the integral from uh, negative 1 down to a negative infinity. So you can think of it as starting right here at negative 1. And we want to find the area under this curve as we go off this way toward a negative infinity. So we'd like to capture this area and then figure out <clears throat> whether it's convergent or divergent. Now to do this, we're going to do a similar process to what we did before. <clears throat> we don't have a formula for an infinite limit. So what we'll do is make it a two-part problem. Let's go back to the rules. So first of all, we'll do this black part here in the middle. We'll just pick some fixed number a and we'll evaluate a definite integral from a to b. Then we'll take the limit as a goes to negative infinity to get the overall integral. So what that's going to look like is come in here and just somewhere off to the left here, we will pick a fixed number a. And first of all, we'll evaluate this definite integral between a and negative 1. So this will be step 1. And again, going back to the thing, <clears throat> the first step is to take care of this black definite integral on the inside. So let's do that. So step number one, this will require u substitution. So step number one is go ahead and find the integral, not from negative infinity to negative one, but from a to a negative one of this. So I've got one over two x plus one quantity squared dx. So what that's going to do, if we evaluate this integral, it's going to give us this area in here between negative 1 and a. Now again, we'll have to use u substitution for this. So again, we'll just run through. And this is just going to be a standard u substitution problem. Let this be u. So to go ahead and do the u substitution. <clears throat> so first of all, we'll let u be equal to 2x plus 1. Then find the derivative. So the derivative of u with respect to x would be equal to 2, which gets you to the differential u would be 2 dx. Now just typical u substitution, you're trying to get rid of this dx right here. So you don't need the 2, so we'll move the 2 over here, and that gets it to 1 half du would be equal to dx. Now this matches up with this. So this is going to be your use substitution right here. So there's the use substitution for this thing. We'll stick a little box around this just to kind of isolate it uh, from here. And so there is the u substitution. So in the problem, what it would look like then is this. It will change into, and we'll go ahead and put it right here. This will be equal to the integral of 1 over, and in place of this we'll have u squared, and then in terms of u, dx is equal to 1 half du, so we'll put the 1 half du right there. Now again, in u substitution we also have to change the limits, so let's go ahead and change the limits on this thing. So this is where we'll work with new limits. So first of all, looking at the top limit, um, when x is equal to a negative 1, 
then u is equal to, and just plug a negative 1 into this right here, and you'd have 2 times a negative 1 plus 1, which would be equal to a negative 1. So uh, the top limit here will remain a negative 1. Now let's get the bottom of it. And again, we'll work on the limits here. So when x is equal to a, then u is equal to, and now plug in a in for x. So this would be 2a plus 1, and you can actually leave it just like that. So this is going to be 2a plus 1. So there's the problem set up in terms of u. Now we'll go ahead and solve that. So what this would be, would be first of all, go ahead and bring the constant out in front. So you'll have 1 half of the integral uh, from 2a plus 1 to a negative 1. Of, now we'll take the u squared on the bottom, move it to the top, and make it be a u to the negative 2 du. Now let's find that antiderivative. So this would be 1 half of... Now this will become u to the negative 1 divided by negative 1 evaluated from 2a plus 1 to negative 1. Okay, now it's just a matter of actually plugging in the top number and plugging in the bottom number. No, we'll rewrite it first. We'll take the negative and move it out in front, so we'll write it one more time. So this will become negative 1 half. And we'll take the u and move it to the bottom. So 1 over u evaluated from negative 1 to 2a plus 1. So now go ahead and plug in the things you've got. So 1 half, negative 1 half of, now I'll plug in the negative 1. That gives me 1 divided by a negative 1. Then minus now plug in the 2a plus 1. This will be 1 over uh, 2a plus 1. So this will get you to, we'll go ahead and simplify it one more step. This will be negative 1 half of, now this will turn into a negative 1. And then I've got minus 1 over 2a plus 1. So what this is, this part right here, is this shaded integral between negative 1 and a. So that's the definite integral. Now that gives you the area between negative 1 and a. So now what you'll do, you'll take the limit as a approaches a negative infinity, and it will pick up this additional area out here. So what that's going to look like, it'll be actually this part of the problem here. Right now you've finished this black inside part, now do this red part, take the limit as a goes to a negative infinity, and you'll have the answer to the problem. So we'll come in, this will be step two. And all it is is take the limit of this thing as a goes to a negative infinity. So this will be the limit as a approaches a negative infinity. So really you're just going to let this a right here slide way out to the left toward a negative infinity, and it'll pick up the additional area of, then you've got negative one-half, and then negative one minus one over two a plus one. So it'll look like that. Now again, on this problem, if you let a go off to a negative infinity, then the denominators are going to become increasingly large, and this entire term right here will go to zero. Oops, zero, sorry. So now what you're left with is the only thing that's left here, we'll go ahead and we'll put it right here, um, you've got negative one-half times a negative one, so you still have this negative one right here, and the whole thing will turn into one-half, and that's going to be the answer to the problem. So the area under this curve between negative 1, if you go all the way out to a positive infinity, it settles on uh, the fixed number 1 half, 
So the, inter the integral is going to be 1 half. And just a reminder, because it's settled on a fixed number, that means that this is convergent. So the limit exists, uh, and it converges on 1 half. So if we look at the rules again, again, uh, first of all, you found definite integral, took the limit as a goes to a negative infinity. It, the limit did exist, so it is a convergent problem. And the final answer looks like this. So again, a kind of a two-step process. So there's a sample um, that goes, rather than going off to a positive infinity to the right, it's a sample that goes off to a negative infinity to the left. But the process is still very similar. And it involved use substitution.